everyone i hope you all are doing well i welcome you back to the video classes of st joseph's academy children in this video we will be learning english mandari of class 2 so children in the last two videos we have read chapter number 12 fix it for the and in the previous video we have completed the question answers of this chapter so children in this video we will be doing the exercise work so turn to page number 130 we will begin with the word wall so children here we have some things that we use so let me read out the question circle the word that does not match the set so children in each part we have total four pictures out of these four pictures three pictures belong to the same category but the fourth one is different so we have to find out the one that does not belong to the set so we will begin with question number 1 a bar we can see a saw nails hammer and a fork we use our fork in the kitchen to eat so for is the odd one we will circle fork now let us move to the second part needle thread spade and scissors so children needle thread and scissors are used while sewing you have you would have seen your mother sewing some clothes or a tailor who sews so spade would be the odd one so in part b we will circle Now let us move to the third one. Ladle, pan, rolling pin, and screwdriver. So children, a ladle, a pan, and a rolling pin. These are the things that we use in our kitchen. But we don't use a screwdriver for cooking. So we will circle. you try so let us circle these three words i repeat we will circle for in part a spade in part b and screw driver in part c after question number 1 let us move to second question match the following pictures of animals to the sounds they make so children here we have a list of sounds and we also have some animals so we have to match the sound with the animal so the first sound given to us is grays b r a y s so children which animal makes this sound yes a donkey breaks so we will write donkey breaks children here you will match it in your book now we will come to the second part trumpets so an elephant Now we will move to the next part. Chirps. So children, you know that birds they make a chirping sound. So we will write birds. They chirp. So bird chirps. Now croaks. A frog makes a croaking sound. So we will write. Frog, a frog, crows. 
C-R-O-A-K-S. Now next is squeaks. So a mouse squeaks. So let me write. Children, a cock crows. So let us look at the answers. Donkey brays. Elephant trumpets. Bird chirps. Frog croaks. Mouse squeaks and cock croaks. So these are the answers for part number 2. Now children, we will move to the next question. So children, after doing this part, we will come to the next page. Page number 131. Here, we will start with the grammar time. So children, in the grammar class, we have learned about different types of sentences. And let us quickly look at the explanation part. So children, what is a sentence? When we join different words and if those words, they make a complete sense. So we can say that a group of words that make a complete sense is known as a sentence. For example, if you say, I want a glass of water. So you have arranged these words in a proper manner and it has a meaning that you need a glass of water. So this is a sentence. Now children, at the end of a sentence, we always put a punctuation mark like a question mark, an exclamation mark or a full stop. So remember the rules that we have to begin a sentence with a capital letter and we have to put a punctuation mark at the end of the sentence. For example, if I say, what is your name? Which means that I am asking a question from you. So we will put a question mark at the end. If I say, what a beautiful dress. It means I am expressing my feelings. So I will put an exclamation mark at the end. So children, let us turn to page number 132 and we will do question number 1. So question number 1. Here are some jumbled sentences. Arrange the words to make sentences. Remember to begin each sentence with a capital letter and use the correct end mark. So children, here we have some words given to us and the words are not arranged properly. What we have to do is, we have to read the question, then we have to arrange these words to make a sentence. So, A part, the question is, thick fur have polar bears. So, how can we make a sentence? Yes, we can write, polar bears have thick fur. So, write down part A. Remember that we have to begin with the capital letter. So, polar bears. Now children, let us move to part C. 
tiny are humming birds humming birds they make a humming sound so they are tiny so we will write down part c humming birds So how can we arrange these words? Yes, we can write this centipede has a hundred legs. So let us write down the answer. Farida will visit the wet 
tomorrow so children here we will try to form the sentences in different time durations so first we will write farida visits the bed every day then farida visited the bed yesterday So children we can write different sentences in this way now we will write down the second sentence so take a walk now the action is to take a walk so we will write so here we will write then in future we will write farida will take a walk tomorrow Now, children, we will write up write three sentences about paint. So, let us write. Farida paints every day. Then, in future tense, we will use will paint. So, let us write. Farida will paint tomorrow. And in the past tense, we will write Farida painted. Yes. And now, children, we have to write using the word fix. So here we will write Farida fixes Farida fixes. Every day. So we stop. Now, children, we will write it in the future tense. So we will write Farida will fix 
अलिखिता टुमोरो and in the past tense in place of will fix we will write fixed and in place of tomorrow we will write yesterday so the sentence will be sarita fixed alikita yes So children, we have completed the revision of tenses given on page number one thirty. Now we will move to the next part. So children, do you remember what are homophones? Yes, homophones are the words that have similar sounds. For example, there. C H T H E R E there and T H E R R there. So children, if we speak there, the sounds of both the words are same, but while writing, their spelling is different. T H E R E there is used to refer to a place, while T H E I R there is used to refer to a person. For example, your bed is kept there. So we will use your bag is kept there. So children, here we are indicating a place. For example, your bag is kept there. So for a place, we will use T H E R E there. Now, let us look at some questions given in the book. So children, we will begin with question number one. The question is: Fill in the blanks with there or there. So A part. I have always wanted to go dash in winters because of the snow. So children, there here they are talking about a place. So for a place we will use the T H E R E there. So first A we will write there T H E R E. Now part B. I have to call the smiths. Do you have dash phone number? So this says I have to call the Smiths. So this person needs to call someone. Do you have there? So here they are talking about the Smiths, which means they are talking about a person. So we will write T H E I R there. Now C part. Do you see that man standing over there? So children, do you see that man standing over there? So here we are trying to indicate our place. So we will write T H E R E there. Please ask him about the phone. So here we are indicating our place. So in part C we will write T H E R E. Now let's come to part D. My sister asked me. By what time will you reach there? So, some my sister called me and she asked, "By what time will you reach there?" Means a place. So here also we will use T H E R E there. And part E. Dash house is very big. So children, we are talking about someone's house, which means here we will refer to a person. So E part we will write T H E I R. Remember, house is very big. Children, we will begin with the capital letter as the blank is in the beginning of the sentence. So 
So after completing this exercise, we will move to the last part. Children, this is right well. And here we have to write a story. So let us look at the question. The question says, look at the pictures. So children, here are some pictures given to us. We have to look at the picture. Fill in the blanks on the next page in order to complete the story. And what we have to do here are some fill ups given to us. We have to fill the blanks. So first of all, let us read. Let us look at the story. So children see, in the first picture you can see there is a man standing. And in the second picture you can see that man, he sleeps under a tree. And then the monkeys come and take away the caps from his back. And in the third picture, this man wakes up. He sees that the monkeys are wearing the cap. So, what does he do? He tries to take the caps from the monkeys. But the monkeys did not give him. So, in the fourth picture, you can see this man throws away his cap. And the monkeys also do the same. They also take out the cap and throw it on the ground. Then this clever man, he picks up all the caps and he goes away. So we will write it. Once upon a time, there was a cap seller who walked from village to village selling caps. It was summer. The cap seller felt dash. So, as we can see in the second picture, the cap seller is sleeping. So, we will write the cap seller fell asleep. So, he slept. In the first plan, we will write asleep and he decided to dash. So, in the second lamp, we will write move further. So, let me read the complete statement. The cap seller felt asleep and he decided to move further later. So, he decides that he will take a rest now and he will move further later. And after some time, he will move to another village. A troop of monkeys saw the cap seller. So, a troop of monkeys means a troop of monkeys saw the cap seller. When he was asleep, they came down and took his caps. So, we will write, they came down. Next line. The monkeys also. So we have seen that the monkeys also throw the. So we will write. The monkeys also did the same.
the gap seller was clever. He plucked a mango and threw. Threw means the past tense of throw. So threw it on the ground. So children, the gap seller then he throws a mango on the ground. The monkeys also did the same. So we will write the monkeys also did the same. The man felt so earlier the man was sad. Now he felt happy. So we will write down happy in the ninth form. And he collected all his caps and goes away. So in the last blank, in the plain blank, we will write. And he collected all his caps. And goes away. So now children, this is the complete story. Now I will be reading out this story for you. So, match your answers if you have written the answers correctly. Once upon a time, there was a cap seller who walked from village to village selling caps. It was summer. The cap seller felt asleep. And he decided to move further later. A troop of monkeys saw the cap seller. When he was asleep, they came down and took all his caps. The cap seller woke up. When he saw his caps were gone, he felt sad. Then he had an idea. He threw his cap on the ground. The monkeys also did the same. The cap seller was clever. He plucked a mango and threw it on the ground. The monkeys also did the same. The men felt happy. And he collected all his caps and goes away. So children, this is the complete story. You have to write down these answers in the blanks given in your book. So children, here we have completed all the exercise work of chapter number.